Hey guys, welcome back to Bible Fun with the Duns. Today we're studying Psalm chapter number 111. Let's get started. All right. Now let me just give you a little hint on something because I want all of us that read our Bibles every day, I, if we have to talk about it, I want us to talk about it and know what we're talking about. Okay, so this is just a little insight. When you're talking about the book of Psalms, okay, we say Psalms with an S on the end. Because the book of Psalms is a collection of Psalms, plural. But when we're talking about one of the Psalms, like today we're looking at number 111. When we talk about that one, we don't say Psalms 111. We say Psalm 111 because it's only one of them. All right. So that's just, that's, that's that. Now, another piece of this is because we want to know what we're saying. Whenever you read the book of Psalms, and you're looking at Psalm 111, you'll notice that this is one of the Psalms that begins with a phrase that just says, praise the Lord. Now, in our words, when we say that in English, that's three words, praise the Lord. But when you say it in Hebrew, it's only one word. As a matter of fact, it's the oldest of all worship words in the whole world and in all of vocabulary. Here it is, you ever heard this word? Hallelujah. You ever heard that? So the word, our words praise the Lord mean hallelujah. And hallelujah means praise the Lord. So if you're ever in church and you hear somebody say hallelujah, what they're saying is praise the Lord. This, that's how this psalm begins, but also notice how the psalm ends. It says, and his praise endures forever. So praising God is something that we start off when we come to the psalms but it's something that we, we go ahead and acknowledge. By the end of it, we say, oh, this never stops. So we're praising God and we're celebrating God. And we go, okay, now I'm finished. No, no, no. We go forever. Now, I want you to notice this. In verse 1, he says, I will praise the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright and in the congregation. So whenever he's talking, he says, I will praise the Lord. He's making, he's making a commitment. He's not saying, I am praising the Lord. He said, I will. Well, when will he do it? Well, by the end, he, he answers it. Remember, his praise will endure forevermore. And so the author here is saying that when he praises the Lord, he is now committed that he's going to keep praising the Lord. Now, notice where, right here where he says, with my whole heart. Here's the thing. Whole heart means that it, we're going to give God all the areas of our life. So some days we're going to have good days and some days we're going to have bad days. Sometimes our heart's going to be joyful. Sometimes our heart's going to be sad. Sometimes we're going to celebrate and sometimes we're going to be mad. He said, God, I'm not going to just give you part of it. He said, with my whole heart, I'm going to bring my happiness and my sadness, my good and my bad, my this and my that, my everything I'm going to give to you because you own my heart, which also means this, when we worship, Worship isn't about going through the exercises. Sing a song, say a prayer, sing a song, sing a song, sing a song, choir sings a song, daddy preaches. That's not what that's not that's not worship. That's a flow, but worship is right here. Now, me and John read these verses. His work is honorable and glorious, and his righteousness endures forever. Then verse four. He has made his wonderful works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. John, what did we come to a conclusion of? So this chapter, yeah, it's about what the Lord does, but we think it's more about who the Lord is. All right. Yeah. Okay. So why should we worship and what should we worship God for? Uh, we should worship him for all of his wondrous works. Okay. So that's what he does. Mm -hmm. And then the next part of that is who he is. So why does God deserve to be worshiped? For what he does and for who he is. Because even if he never did anything good for us ever again, he still deserves our worship because of who he is. Now, here's what I like. I like that when you read verse two, it says, the works of the Lord are great, studied by all who have pleasure in them. Okay, well, what do you study? You study what he's written and what he's done and what he said. And then you can look in verse five, you look in verse six, verse seven, verse eight, verse nine. All of these are about his word. 
See, God created the, word, the world with his word. He said, let there be light, and there was light. So he's saying God created the world with his word, and now he keeps the world together with his word, and his word is trustworthy, it's reliable, his word never fails. But here's my favorite part. So we get into the holidays. Listen, he has sent redemption to his people. Oh, who did he send to us because he so loved the world? Jesus. So when it says he has sent redemption to his people, that's fulfilled in the sending of Jesus. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should never perish but have everlasting life. To redeem means to save out of, to buy out of, to purchase out of, to free. Well, who gave us freedom? Jesus. And so he has given, or he has sent redemption to his people. That's pushing us ahead to remember Jesus. This is a Jesus song too. Keep reading, keep looking for the Lord, worshiping for what he's done and who he is. All right, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.